Hey you guys, what's up? My name's Jason and today I'm going to be taking you through this really cool tutorial on how to create this Lumino City new game page. Now if you've been following this series, you've seen that we've been creating artwork from the hit game Lumino City. Now, I'm not taking credit for any of the artwork in this game. I'm just showing you how you can recreate the artwork so you can begin to build up your visual library as well as your techniques for creating amazing game graphics. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, if you remember in the first tutorial in this series, we did a gameplay. And in that gameplay, we first started it off on this page where we started a new game. Now, this is the page we're going to be recreating and it's gonna look like this at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a new document. Now I've already created one, it's 1920 by 1080, and it has a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. Now next what I'm gonna do is we need to find an image for our background. You can use whatever you want. I have an image right here of a skyline. I got this image from a website called Pexels, and it's spelled P-E-X-E-L-S dot com and I'll leave a link for that in the description. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and right click this image and copy image. This is the quickest way to do it. If you want, you can go ahead and save it so you have a copy of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just paste that in like so. Then using my transform tool, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that down so it fits into my document. And what I want it to do is I want it to fit width wise. Now also, I'm holding down shift while I do this. That way I get it scaled in proportion, and then I'm gonna drag it up to where I want it. So I want it about there, and then I'll go ahead and hit enter. Next, let's go ahead and make the main circle in the center of our document. So I'm gonna come over to my shape tool, and I'm gonna change my stroke from black to white. Then I'm going to change the width of my stroke from 15 pixels to 10 pixels. So I'll just go ahead and type in the number 10 in there. And then we can go ahead and create that circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag like so, holding down shift to get a perfect circle. And I want it about that size. And then I'm going to actually bring down the width of my stroke to, let's say five pixels, let enter, see how that looks? Much better. Let's actually bring it down to four pixels, perfect. Now let's go ahead and drag that into the center of our document. Now if yours isn't snapping straight into the center, you're not getting those purple lines going across there, what you need to do is you need to come up to view and then you need to come down to snap to and make sure your guides, layers, and document bounds are all selected. And then you can go ahead and snap things into the center. Next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and blur out this outer area. Now the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come back into our shape tool and we're gonna fill it with the color black and we're gonna take this fill away eventually, but we wanted to do this for the time being because we're gonna go ahead and select our shape by hitting Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and you're going to click the thumbnail on your layer. So now you see we get this nice dotted line around the outside of our circle. What we need to do now is we need to invert that selection, so we'll hit Control shift i or Command shift i if you're on a Mac, and now you'll see it's selected this outer area. You can tell because the outside has this nice dotted line on it. So now that we have this selected, we can go ahead and come down and select our image layer, and then we're gonna come up to filter, and then we're gonna come down to blur, and we're gonna come over to gouache and blur. Now, I have it set to 36 pixels, and you can play with this. You can make it more blurred, you can make it less blurred, but I'm gonna bring it back to 36, and I think somewhere around there will be good. Next, while I have this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and create a hue and saturation layer for this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down so it's a little bit darker. I'm gonna bring it down to about 18, negative 18. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in, negative 18. We could even try negative 19. Perfect. So now that's a little bit darker. Then we can come back up to our circle layer and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this fill. So all I do is hit this white box with a red line through it. And now that turns that off. And so now you see everything on this outside area is blurred and is also a little bit darker than the inside of our circle. Now, next what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and copy this circle shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. Now you'll see I can drag that circle over and I have a copy of that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this down with my transform tool and holding down Shift and Alt at the same time. That way I shrink it in proportion and I shrink it from the center. So I'm gonna shrink it to about two thirds of the size of my original circle, we'll hit enter. And then I wanna drag that over to about there. 
And next what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a copy of this layer. And on this new layer, I'm going to go ahead and fill this circle in with a black. So I'll select the color black. And then I'm going to bring down the opacity on that to about 20%. Perfect. Next, I'm going to go ahead and select both of these circles. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J. So now I have a copy of both those. And I'm going to drag that copy over just like so. And if you have your Snap 2 turned on, it will snap right into place. So these will be equally distanced apart. And now what I want to do is I want to add in my domino design on this circle. So if we come back into our original example, you'll see there's that domino design. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. The way I'm going to do that is by using my brush tool. So I'm going to add a new layer above this. And then I'm going to come into my brushes and make sure I'm on a hard edged brush. And about the size I have it at now should work fine. I'm going to go ahead and click right there. And I want to make sure I'm also on the color white. So I'm going to switch over to white and I'll go ahead and click like so. Then switching over to my grab and move tool, I'm gonna go ahead and hold down alt and click and drag that circle and you'll see that makes an automatic copy. Now I didn't drag it into the exact place I wanted to so I'm gonna try that again. So I want it to be straight across from it and line up perfectly. And then I'm gonna do that once again like so and all those should line up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those layers, merge them together and then make a copy of them. Then I'm gonna grab that copy and drag it down just like so. And then I'm gonna merge both those layers together. So now that's all one layer and I can click and drag that right into the center, just like so. Perfect, now let's move on to creating our text. So I'm gonna switch over to my text tool and I'm gonna go ahead and start typing. Now I'm using a font called ABZ. That's spelled A-B-E-E-Z-E-E. -E I got this font off of a website called Font Squirrel. So if you go to fontsquirrel.com, you can go ahead and do a search for this font and you'll find it. Now, if I can find it, I'll go ahead and leave a link for it in the description. If not, you'll have to search it yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start typing and what I wanna type is photography. So, photography. And then I'm going to drag that over so it's in the center. And while I have my text selected, it won't snap into the center. So what I need to do is I need to switch over to my grab and move tool. And now I can go ahead and snap that right into the center of my circle and the center of my document. Now I have my text size set to 19.21. So somewhere around 19 pixels should be good. You can go ahead and play around with that. So if I select it, I can go ahead and bring that size up a little bit. Um, we just want to make sure that it fits into the circle. So maybe about 20 we'll go ahead and hit 20 and then i can go ahead and grab that and recenter it now let me show you the settings that i have for my characters so if i go ahead and select this and come into my character panel i have the distance between each letter set to 80 and i also have the stretch horizontally set to 106 percent so it's stretched out horizontally just a little bit Next, let's go ahead and add a drop shadow to this because right now it's pretty hard to see because it's white text on a light background. So we're gonna come down to FX, drop shadow, and then we're gonna go ahead and play around with this. I want my opacity at about 50% and then I want to change my speed from whatever it was to something maybe a little bit higher. And then I'm going to change the size. So I want my size a little bit larger and I'm gonna bring the speed up just a little bit more. So more like 8% and then I can change my size a little bit more. And then we can bring that opacity up just a titch bit more to about 55%. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. So now that photography text stands out a lot more. Next, let's go ahead and copy this layer and drag this copied text layer over to this circle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select all the words in there and I'm going to type in new. And then I can go ahead and use my grab and move tool and grab that and move it right into the center. So we want it to line up with our photography text, which actually turns out that it's not even in the center of its circle. So what we need to do is first, let's go ahead and drag this new into the center of its own circle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch down to my photography text and I'm gonna go ahead and drag that down like so. And so now that's more centered in its circle. Next, let's go ahead and create the two circles that go down here at the bottom. So if we come back to our original one, we have these two down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and copy one of my original circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control J and then I'm gonna drag that layer up to the top and then I can go ahead and drag that down like so. And using Control T, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that down really small 
so about there should be good. And then I'm gonna drag that so it lines up right with the center of my document like so. And then I'm gonna nudge it over using my grab and move tool. And I'm gonna nudge it over to the left of my page, three pixels. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And then next what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and copy this layer, fill this shape in with a white, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the opacity down on that. So I'll bring it down to about, I'm gonna put it at about 60%, 65%, somewhere around there should be good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my text tool to type in the number one there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my grab and move tool to center that. So that's about centered, but it won't center vertically. So what I need to do is use my arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge that over till it looks about centered. Next, let's go ahead and select all three of these layers, and then we're gonna go ahead and copy them, and then drag those copies over like so, and we want it to line up like so, so it's right in the center. But this time, I'm gonna go ahead and change my text from the number one to the number two. So I'll type in two there, and then I'm gonna switch over to this transparent white shape and what I want to do here is I want to come over to my shape tool come up to my fill and change that to the color black now that black is too dark so I need to change my opacity and I'm gonna change it to about 20 percent perfect now there's two things that I want to do last first I want to play around with my background so I'm gonna come down to my background layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brightness and contrast layer on top of that by coming up to my adjustments panel and then selecting this little sun icon. And now I can go ahead and bring my contrast up. Now I don't wanna bring it up all the way, but I wanna bring it up pretty close. So I'm gonna bring it up to about 79. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer above all these layers. So I have my background layer, my brightness and contrast layer, and my darkening layer that darkens this outside area. So above all of that, I wanna go ahead and create a black layer and I'm gonna use my fill tool to fill that in. Then using my erase tool, and I have my size brought up really, really large, so it's a little bit larger than my actual document size. And then I'm going to make sure I'm on a soft edged brush. I'm gonna go ahead and click right in the center like so, and then I'm gonna click a little bit more to this side and then a little bit more to that side. So now I get a nice sort of vignette on there. And you can play around with the opacity if that's too dark for you, but I'm gonna leave it at 100%. Next, what I wanna do is I want to add the logo into my document. So if we come back into here, you'll see there's a logo that says Lumino City. Now, if this was your own game, you could go ahead and put in your own logo, but today for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use the Lumino City logo. So I found it online and this is a PNG, so it has a transparent background. And what you can do is you can either select it with your marquee tool and then copy it and paste it into your document, or you can even just click and drag the entire layer and drag it into your document and then drop it. And it's a little bit small, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the size. Now, if you're working with your own logo, you probably have larger versions of your logo, possibly even a, a vector logo, so you won't have to worry about losing resolution. But since I found this online, I don't have a larger version of it. Next, I'm gonna add a drop shadow to this to make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna come down to FX, drop shadow, and I want this drop shadow to be a little less opaque, and I want the speed to be a little bit smaller, and the size to be much smaller. So about there should be good, and I might bring up the opacity just a little bit more to about 33%. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. So now that text stands out a lot more. All right, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something valuable from it. My name's Jason, and have a great life. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll be sending you many more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.